Daniel Cormier and Stipe uh, rematch that could potentially lead to, you know, whoever wants to be the future heavyweight uh, champion down the line, you know, whenever that becomes the case. Um, and, and I bring that up because um, I've got it pulled up here. Daniel Cormier has been uh, talking to... He's been talking with the UFC and he has been uh, talking about how they're trying to get the uh, trilogy fight between him and Stipe set up. Cannot wait. Yeah. So that's going to be something to be looking forward to. I wanted to bring that up just because uh, that's something to that's something to be excited about, you know. And, and really, it uh, is something to be excited about just based on how Daniel Cormier feels about it. Because I haven't really found anything uh, to give me indication on how Stipe feels about it. Uh, all I've heard is what uh, Daniel Cormier has to say about it. I don't know what that necessarily says about Stipe and where he's at on the whole matter, since he's not being very vocal about it. Or he he might I don't think he's much of a social media guy, so he probably just hasn't really taken anybody yet. He's probably just you know quarantined right now and he's not doing any interviews. But basically, um, based on what DC says, is that he believes that Stipe has expressed interest and that really for both men it's kind of what they need because they're one in one right now you have to have that closure to see who really is the best yeah because they were one in one in two fights that had pretty definitive finishes you know it, it wasn't like it wasn't like Daniel Cormier completely blew Stipe out of the water the first time and then Stipe you know, just barely scraped by with a unanimous decision, you know, it was. Yeah, they both knocked each other out. Yeah, so, and, and Daniel Cormier has been extremely vocal uh, since the fact that he wants that rematch, that he believes he is is uh, deserving of said rematch. And in a way, I agree with what he's saying, uh, but he's almost kind of in the position where he feels like he should get the rematch next, and that's it. You know, nobody else should be fighting Stipe right now, making Daniel Cormier wait any longer. Um, it's kind of interesting. What do you think about that? Do you believe that Daniel Cormier should immediately get this rematch? Or do you believe that other people are due uh, something? Because I understand where Daniel Cormier is coming from. Daniel wants this fight uh, so that he can say definitively, I am the greatest heavyweight of all time. So, I can see what, I can see it from pretty much both sides, like a little bit half and half, because he sees like, at the point where win or lose the next fight, he's probably going to retire. Yes. So, it makes sense that he's trying to do that as quickly as possible, so that he's not waiting like a whole another year or two years for Stipe to recover or for all the fights to go down and everybody to go to their training camps and for it to all come together finally. So it makes sense that he wants to do it first, mm -hmm. and also why they should do it first. But at the same time, you got Ngannou, you got Ngannou who wants to rematch with Stipe. Yes. You got, you got Derek Lewis who wants another title shot after he was, had a five-round war with DC. Yep. So you just got a lot of other people that are waiting, and is it really fair to keep them waiting for this long when they're active and young and whatnot? Exactly. No, it's just one of those where I'm 50-50 on it. Like, I think that DC should get a, another rematch because he gave Stipe one as, like, a one Stipe was ready. Yep. But is it one of those things? Yeah, he, uh... Yeah, it's, a, it's interesting. I kind of see... It kind of paints a different picture when DC says, that's the fight I want to retire on. And it's like, whoa, okay. Because now it kind of adds like a whole new level of importance to the fight. Because um, DC wants the fight to happen like this year. 
and he wants it as soon as possible as soon as all this quarantine shit gets done and dealt with and you know his his uh you know if ufc 249 comes and goes and it was a clean smooth transition you know he wants to be able to have whatever comes next be his rematch and he feels like he is he's deserved it because he he this whole he's i think what it is right now especially is that he's a little scared of the quarantine uh fiasco basically making it to where fighters are so inactive and fighters can't do anything he he i think what he is he's afraid of retiring during this point in time in history where he'll basically he'll he'll be, he'll go he'll retire and he'll be gone without really much fuss brought up over it like i believe he was comparing himself to a uh, nba player who had something very similar happen to him uh says right here on the screen vince carter from the nba um, had a lackluster fell farewell after the NBA suspended its season due to the uh, spread of COVID-19. And the season, I'm assuming, was meant to be uh, Carter's last season. And it was meant to be his send-off season, but because you know it got canceled and he couldn't do anything with it, uh, what I assume is a veteran of, of basketball has been forced to retire without so much as a, a, a birthday party, you know, without so much as a, a, a goodbye party, you know. And, and, and I can understand that DC doesn't want that same thing to happen because how many fighters do you and I know of that had some pretty lackluster retirements that didn't have the kind of send-offs that they deserved, you know. Big names come to mind like Matt Hughes is the first one. You know, Matt Hughes had a really lackluster send-off when it was just announced one day that he was retired from fighting and he was going to be working for the UFC. And so I get that. And, and with that information in mind, it kind of makes me think, well, you know what? All you other guys, you can go fuck yourself, I guess. is, is You know? Because, I mean, like, now it's not, yeah, it's these young guys, yeah, they want their shot at the title, but it's like, okay, we're looking at one of the greats of the sport right now. We're looking at Daniel Cormier, collegiate wrestler, decorated Olympian, and you've got the fact that he is, he's like, he's like 22-2 and two in the UFC, only losing to, respectively, the two greatest in their own respective division, John Jones, Stipe, respectively. And he's finished like 15 out of those 22 fights, you know, either by knockout or submission. You're looking at a very dangerous man. I, I'll pull it up for you right here. The stats. Very dangerous man. 10, 10 TKO KOs, 5 submissions. Wild. I think he's better than John Jones. I'm just going to say it. Well, there you go. I don't think he's ever gotten the respect he deserves, and nobody's ever given it to him, right? Yeah, and then it's it's gonna suck when if you know this does send him off, and he has to leave out. Cause, cause I mean, bro, he was one of the original champ champs. He was the second one. Exactly, and he and he, as of this moment in time, holds the record for the only champ champ to have defended both belts. Yeah. And that's crazy. That's crazy to me. Because that goes into the whole... And meanwhile, Amanda Nunes is doing it every other week now. Well, Amanda Nunes, I know, actually does have her first um, title um, defense in the featherweight belt uh, going up against... Um, here it is. Oh, well, they don't have the rankings for the featherweight. Still, still they don't have rankings for the featherweight belt. But I believe it was Jessica something or another. But that's going to be her first. Do what? Is it Jessica I? No, Jessica I is going to be fighting uh, Valentina Shevchenko uh, for the flyweight. Let me see if it pulls it up here in the future. UFC 250. Yeah, it was scheduled for UFC 250. Um, and it was going to be against... Oh, never mind. It wasn't Jessica. It was Felicia Spencer. That's what it was. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember that now. I don't know why I said Jessica. Just because you're a liar. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you're this time. 
of this time of crisis. I don't even know why I do this shit. Yeah, so. everybody. Yeah. But yeah, so, so Amanda Nunes will be... Not only will she be the first women's double champ in the UFC, she'll also be the first women's double champ in the UFC to have defended both belts. Whether or not she'll actually defend the featherweight belt, you know, come May, we don't know. That, I mean, like, I, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to go ahead and say nobody can beat Amanda Nunes right now. She's on such a hot streak. Uh, Felicia Spencer, she's not going to make it. But... <laughs> But, but I don't want to jump to conclusions. You know, that's for that's for that's a whole other topic for another show. We're talking about DC and Stipe right now, so that's uh, that's kind of where I'm at with it. I don't. I know. I just said I don't want to do predictions for Ngannou versus Rosenstrike, but bro, I've got to ask. These guys are one and one. Who do you think is going to win in the rematch? Stipe. Stipe. Now, <laughs> why is that? Might I ask? He's just younger, and so there's a theory, right? I mean, he's only 38, let's be fair. I thought he was 40 now. If I'm not mistaken, I could be. I thought it was 38. Thirty-seven. Oh. Mm-hmm. He'll be 38 this August. Really? I yeah. thought he was older than that. Well, he's still older for UFC standards. True, true. Um, and so there's a theory that I listened to, and I didn't believe it too much, but I think it could have played a factor. Uh-huh. Is, so DC and Stipe fought, the first time they fought, Stipe just came off of fighting and got him. Like how, how recent? Oh, wow. So, I think that it's possible that his chin could have sustained injuries, and that is what led DC to become the victor. But, I'm not taking anything away from DC, he hit him clean as shit. Yeah, <laughs> he completely pressed his face into the mat. Yeah, and then he stood over him and hit him a few more times. Yeah. <laughs> that was a few years ago now. That was and last year. Way, like, if DC can win early, then it's DC's fight. Like, if he just out-wrestles him immediately, because, like, the last fight, it was, like, pretty much a kickboxing match with, like, one or two takedowns in there. Right. Which isn't the way that DC should be fighting at this point in his career, where he's just going to take injury for four rounds. Yeah. I mean, he should be in complete control wrestling him. I mean, if, you, if, if you're going to go out, go out with a bang, you know? That's true, go out with a bang, but if the last fight you were planning on retiring, don't go that hard. True, true. Like, don't put yourself in the position to get hurt like you did. Well, now that he is planning on retiring after this now fight... Now he's planning on retiring after this fight, if he is or not, go out with a bang and get knocked out again. I don't care what you do, <laughs> Do whatever you want. Like, if you're trying to win, try to win. Yep. You're, like, giving him too many chances. Yep. Makes sense. But I just think Stipe, I think the same kind of thing is going to happen, where they fight, and it's really, really even until it gets towards the end, and then Stipe just turns it up on him. Yeah, that could be a, that could be a possible uh, factor. I mean... I, you know, we'll see what happens. You know, you're looking at two of the best in the world. Right now. He's got better card against, you know, the daddest man on the planet, DC. Yep. The daddest man. The daddest manual. The DMF. <laughs> <laughs> the daddest what we want to hear about. <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> So yeah, so that's kind of...